Yeah, welcome everyone. So, yeah. Oh, I have a question. Please. No, uh, I was just going to say, um, yeah, we are here today representing the CDFTOC. Um, yeah, so we wanted to, to give you an opportunity to meet us and ask questions. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I can, I can say, um, well, let, let's, let's first start with a round of introduction, right? Okay. Yeah. You want to get... So, uh, Steve Taylor, I'm from the Deploy Hub, um, part of the Artilius project that's under the CDF. Uh, and I'm trying to think what else I got going on. Just a few things. Uh, and also on Persia as well. Done, done work on those two projects under the, the CDF. That's who I am. Cool. Um, oh, oh. Did I turn it off? Hello? Yep. Okay. I'm Melissa McKay. I am a, de a developer advocate with JFrog. JFrog is a member of the CD Foundation. And uh, I was, I think, at first appointed and then elected by the governing board. I don't know how that works. Anyway, this was a really cool opportunity because not all of the TOC members are here, but enough of us were here at this conference. We thought this would be a really good idea to everyone get together. Thanks. And I'm Andrea Frittoli. I work for IBM. I'm a developer advocate. I'm a maintainer uh, of Tecton and CD events project within the, the CDF. And yeah, I was elected to the TOC as a project representative for, for Tecton. And you're also the, what are we calling you now? The chairman of the TOC? And uh, yeah, I also elected the chair as the TOC, so I serve as as chair and yeah so maybe just a couple of words about how the the TOC is structured um, so we uh, we have uh, four members which are elected by the the maintainer or the contributor community within the CDF so everyone that contrib who contributes to the technical project hosted um, within the CDF can vote and select four uh, representative of the TOC then we have uh, three representatives in the TOC, which are uh, chosen by, elected by the, the governing board, like, uh, Melissa. Um, and finally, uh, we have two of the representatives on the TOC, which are um, part of the end user community. So we have end user company, which are members of the CDF, and they select two individuals uh, to join the, the TOC uh, for one year term, um, yeah, to represent the end user community. Um, yeah, so I, I put up uh, like the charter of our, it's uh, under the city foundation slash TOC repo, but basically to give you an idea of what we do, we are, uh, as a TOC, we are responsible for collaboration with, between and among the technical projects hosted within the CDF. Um, so we are also responsible for the, the life cycle of this project, so making sure that we, we review application for projects entering the CDF. Um, and helping them grow through the CDF and get to a graduations, graduated state. Uh, yeah, state. So probably one of the, like a couple of the most important documents if you're a project or you're interested in how projects join, uh, there's the project lifecycle documentation that tells you, you know, all of the criteria in order to um, submit your project to the uh, CD Foundation. And then there is a, uh, like a project proposal that comes even before then, if you're interested in a particular project joining, um, that includes all of the specifications that you need to get set up before you're accepted to the foundation. All of us in the GitHub repo, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> there's a CD foundation repo, there's a TOC section underneath of that, and all of that documentation's in there. And one of the things that we are constantly doing is looking for uh, new projects that we can bring into the, the CD Foundation. Um, and even if and we have some projects that we'll share with from like the CNCF or the OpenSSF. Um, so for example, we have a supply chain working group in the CDF that is kind of crossing over with the working groups from the OpenSSF. So we, I think we technically 
um, at the TOC level uh, have the oversight over the working groups as well and keep an eye on what they're doing uh, at that level. Um, we're currently going through a process of making sure uh, there's project representation uh, that we know who the, 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 the contact person is for all, all the projects that we have out there, even though it's not that many. It's amazing how quickly people move around and we're constantly you know, going through and making sure we know who's, who's doing what, what the projects have going on, uh, if they need any help uh, in marketing, um, you know, those type of things, if they need help in getting presentations together. Uh, that's one of the things that we're, we're kind of responsible for. Cool. Shall we open it for questions? Do you, I think Robert had a question they wanted to. No, my question was, what does the, C, the uh, CDF TOC do? And you all answered that. With the microphone. <laughs> so <laughs> rigor, rigor for recordings. Robert, go ahead, ask your question. <laughs> well, they answered it, which was, what, is, what does the TOC do? And you all nailed it. Cool. Yeah, another thing we, we, we do, we kind of um, uh, start or, or help uh, like technical initiative within the CDF community. So we have what they're called special interest group. Um, and we have a few different topics and those are communities that uh, within the CDF that come together to discuss things like uh, interoperability, uh, events, supply chain, um, and uh, yeah, we have MLOPS interest group as well. So, and we have sponsors within the TOC that each sponsor is responsible for one of these groups. I just wanna make a comment as a developer I worked in a cyclo for many, many years. I didn't really pay attention to governance or um, foundations or whatever. You know, I just went to my job, I did my job, I used whatever libraries were available to me. But one of the questions that I got answered immediately is why? Why do we care? Why would we submit a project to a foundation at all? And the biggest reason that was important to me as a developer is when I bring in another project to my own project and I rely on it for my own success of my own development, I there's a certain amount of trust I need to have that that project is going to be active tomorrow. You know, that there's going to be someone I can contact if there's a problem or if there's a feature, um, and especially in open source, if there's something that I would like to discuss committing to the project. You know, I want to be able to do that. And being part of, found of the foundation, there's a certain amount of vetting that takes place already when the project is a part of the foundation that I don't have to do myself as a developer when I'm considering tools for my own project. So that was something that I really appreciate. And one of the vetting things that we do is initially when a project comes in, they need to have governance. Um, they need to show proof of activity and proof of um, uh, collaboration between several different people, not just one person, you know, committing everything for the project. So pretty good stuff. And also on that that front, we, um, like with the CD events, the, the CD events uh, originally started out as just a working group. And uh, that working group grew big enough and had enough uh, interest uh, and they, finally got to a point where they could see a deliverable that was going to come about and the TOC worked with the, that working group to convert it into a, a, an official project under uh, the CD Foundation. So things like that will happen as well. So if you have um, some uh, particular interest uh, topic around the, the, the pipeline world or the, the, this, the integration or the delivery side, doesn't really matter. We'll take a look at it and see how we can help you out on that front. Um, and one of the things, if you are uh, interested in, in uh, checking out what's going on, uh, if you go to the CD Foundation uh, website, uh, you'll find our shared calendar. So most of the projects will put their meeting times out there, out on the shared calendar. Um, and make sure you scroll because depending on which time zone you're in, yeah. you'll find different things. Uh, you know, the, we, we try to adjust to have things um, 
like on the Ortelius side, Thank you. we have typically meetings early in the morning um, in the states to help um, meet up with the folks in oh. India that are in the evening. But then we also have another uh, group that's in Australia, and so we have a second meeting to deal with that. So just um, when you go to the counter, make sure you look through um, all the different time slots throughout the day. Um, I have a question. Yep. Yeah, thank you. So my name is Enrique. I'm, I have been attending some of the TOC meetings over the last month and also been participating on the outreach committee uh, representing Project Shipwright. Uh, so my question is about uh, which is the criteria for graduating a project, uh, for example, from incubation into the next step? If you right. Could, yeah. You want to take care of that, Andre? Um, since you went through it recently with Ecton? Yeah, as we, we went through that uh, last uh, last fall, uh, last uh, autumn in uh, for Tecton. So there are several type of requirements um, that span from like best practices, and so we use like the OpenSSF badge program. And so that's something that the the project, at least the, the major project within your larger project should comply with and that brings uh, a lot of requirements in terms of like um, how your governance uh, is documented so you must have like public do governance documentation you must have uh, good uh, release documentation so that uh, if you, someone wants to to consume your project they know where to find releases how often releases will happen and so forth um, and there is also a requirement uh, that is external to the OpenSSF to, to at least have a plan for having long-term support releases. Uh, that's something that we started doing, for instance, for Tecton as a, to, to match uh, this criteria. Um, so on top of the OpenSSF badges, well, as part of the OpenSSF badges, also it's, uh, there are a number of like, security uh, requirements. So you must have like one person within the project that is like the at least one person with security experience that is like the security uh, point of contact and uh, certain best practices and that also helped us in Tecton to uh, set up like uh, extra CI job and checks to, to make sure that security was uh, complied. One requirement also related to security is to have a security audit uh, or recent security audit for, done for your project um, and then, yeah, so ad adoption um, is also one of the requirements. So you need to demonstrate that the project has been adopted by a certain number of users. Um, also, things that count are like uh, other projects building on top of your projects. That's also a good uh, sign of healthy uh, project that is um, then for, for a uh, graduation. Um, did I miss? Well, well the, that security audit was done by a, a third party. Yes. So the security audit for Tecton was done by a third party, uh, Trail of Bits, I think was the name of the company. And yeah, so it was uh, arranged and paid for by, by the CDF uh, for, for Tecton. Um, so, but it was an independent company and they've been working with a lot of project uh, projects in the CNCF as well. So, and is that is, is that independence a requirement? Because the Jenkins project, for instance, did not use an independent auditor to do this security assessment. Is that something they, that projects can do a self-assessment? Um, from my understand, in the um, the lifecycle project, so you, in, in the in the CDF, we don't have a sandbox like in the CNCF. So you start out as incubating and then you go from incubating to, to graduated. We haven't had the need at this point to introduce a sandbox um, level, a part of the life cycle. So you start out at incubating, then you go to graduating. And in that life cycle document, it talks about the, the third party is needed. And like what Andrea said, it was paid for by um, the CDF to get that done. So it wasn't something that like a company had to step up and, and do. Now, I believe with Jenkins, um, because Jenkins was like one of the original founders of the, the CD Foundation, I think they already had the security audit done, and Jenkins kind of came in pretty close to being graduated with a lot of the criteria already in place. So that's kind of like the, the historical part of the, the Jenkins side. 
Yeah, I mean, Jenkins has got a security team of four or six people. So we, we, it's not a question of compliance. It was rather of, oh, did we miss something that we need to go get somebody to do this for us? Be, be, yes, the, we, we've got a security team and we've got a security officer and we've got all sorts of, all manner of stuff like that. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. I like that both of you mentioned that that was paid for by the CDF. So another benefit of being a project within a foundation is you get a lot of support like that. And that's part of what the TOC is supposed to do is um, if a project has infrastructure needs or you know um, finance concerns, uh, we can take that information to our budget committee and figure out what we can do to help. And it was, it was interesting when, um, when we first started working with uh, Oleg and uh, the Jenkins side, um, we found that uh, a lot of the Jenkins infrastructure was on Koski's credit card. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So we had to do some work on that front to, to get things moved around. And when we actually did that, we actually found that we were able to do a bunch of cost savings. And one of the cost savings was to um, utilize some of the GitHub features. Um, which was weird, but it was one of those things that we were able to offset just by ch changing up um, some of the platform, uh, underlying platform stuff. Um, so, and then there's other, like, uh, on the Ortelia side, we run our stuff in Azure. So we actually had the, the Linux Foundation stand up uh, uh, Kubernetes in Azure for us. Um, I don't know, what, what, what is, you, does Tekton run in uh, most of the infrastructure in Google? Uh, yeah, yeah, most of the infrastructure is in GCP, but we have now a billing account on GCP, part of the Linux Foundation group, so. And that's also something that the CD Foundation as TOC we worked on to transfer the initial billing uh, of the project into a CD, CDF, Linux Foundation account, yeah. And now Robert here is going to give us a screaming deal on all these platforms <laughs> as, as our, our new uh, go-to person for tools. So, and that's part of it is, is as the, um, these, your individual projects come together, we are actually able to get better, you know, billing prices and things like that uh, as part of that. And things like, um, you know, running SNCC, um, those trivi, some of the insights you get from uh, the LFX tools come into play as well um, as things kind of roll up. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> He's, get, just throw it over. <laughs> Free lunch workout. Good for um, I had a a moment of jealousy yesterday when I was watching the graduation panel that you hosted, and I think uh, Mark, you were, you were on it, and Andrea, you were on it too. And I think it's when um, what was the guy from Codefresh? His name is uh, Dan Garfield. Was talking about Argo. He was kind of listening out. Oh yeah, no, Argo has got Argo CD, and it's got Argo workflows. It's got the new um, um, progressive releasing option, and they've got events. And just his ability to kind of describe Argo, Argo in terms of an end-to-end -end reference architecture to do GitOps was like, oh man, that's nice. <laughs> and um, I've been wondering if there is an opportunity to um, think more about how to describe the individual projects within CD Foundation as part of a broader reference architecture that covers the sort of CI, CD, end-to-end. -end. Um, related to this, I'm also wondering if we because I'm all about Tekton all the time, if we reflexively think about other projects as often as we need to. For example, we're talking a lot about um, artifacts in Tekton, like you described this morning, Andre, which is really important to Tekton. But I think that so far, everyone at Google who's thinking about artifacts and how artifacts should be built and what Tekton building looks like probably doesn't know much about Chipwright or thinks about it too much, which. It's, it's, which is bad, right? Like a, we should, that should be sort of front and center in our thinking about the design of how to build things as sort of prior art that exists within the foundation, right? Um, 
So that's not a question. That's a, but I guess what I'm yeah, I, I think these I, are things that I guess the as as the body responsible for making sure that projects are talking to each other and leveraging each other. These are some of the things I think and, we need to be focusing. On. And one of the things we've started this year is to we've actually set out a calendar to have all their projects kind of present um, the roadmap and the status uh, to the TOC, so we can. Uh, get a better idea of what's happening on uh, for each one of the projects and based on that we'll be able to figure out how we can um, you know make sure that not like not necessarily talking to each other but understand what's happening with each one of the projects um, at that level so we are starting there um, to go down that road and in trying to get the sharing between the different teams and the different projects uh, happening <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Does it make sense then after you're done with each project um, to have all the projects come together and then you like to based off of what Al was saying, like, I mean, it's great that you guys know and that the individual projects are telling you, but to his point, if they're not talking to each other, then it's a loss mm -hmm. so is that like the end goal is like have them all kind of get you up to speed and then bring them all together and you know with their main maintainers or project reps and then go forward um i don't we haven't thought that far ahead i don't think um, no but one of the things that also you were mentioning steve earlier is that um we we have project representative now for each project and they are invited to, to the TOC meetings. So the TOC meetings, first of all, are public. Everyone can join, but we have like a specific representative for each project. And I think we have been having quite a good attendance from the beginning of 2023, about 75%, I think was last time I checked from the project representative joining the, the TOC meeting. So that means that when the other project come and do their presentation, at least one person from each of the other project is aware of what is going on and that's hopefully triggering this kind of conversation like Al was uh, mentioning that in the tech on designing artifacts should be aware of other projects and what they are doing in that space so that we can have these kind of conversations. Can I, can I give the example of seeing the dance and Spencer? And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So let, let me give you a concrete example of this. So earlier this year, um, we had uh, our friends at Apple said, well, we really want Spinnaker to support CD events. That'd be handy for us. All right, cool. And then our friends at Fidelity said, wow, you know, we really like CD events and Jenkins. Uh, these are good things. So notice that this came from, yeah, I mean, th these are folks that work closely um, with, with CDFTOC, but this can come from anywhere in the community. So if you have an example, anybody has an example of, wow, I really wish these two projects did X together, let us know. Um, let the project folks know. Uh, this is, you know, I really got a problem with the whole technical oversight. And I really believe strongly that it should be like technical nudging committee, uh, <laughs> where it's like, hey, you know. That's what the OpenSSF goes under yeah. is the TAC. I don't know, does anybody know what the CNCF calls it? That's TOC. Is it a TOC? Yeah. There's uh, there's also uh, steering. Yeah. Which, yeah. which again, I, I, I nudging, nudging. Hey, you know. So well, you, you can, you can tell we're we're definitely developers because we just go copy repos, <laughs> <laughs> do a, a search and replace, and call it ours. So that's us. <laughs> we try not to reinvent stuff, uh, and just do, do the copy part. So. Uh, and, that, and because of that, it is an evolving process. You know, we, we know that we don't have everything right. Um, and when people point stuff out, we go and try to fix it. I know initially before I got involved with the committee itself, I was nervous about even joining a call like that. Like, is it secret? Is this all stuff that happens that is, you know, am I going to be a complete stranger? It's like walking into a room and nobody knows who you are, you know. But I think one of the most important things you said is that these meetings are public. Uh, you do have a voice. We do want to hear it. Uh, they're recorded too. So if you're curious what a meeting sounds like or what is talked about, uh, that's all out there on YouTube and um, 
set of really good notes. I think Andrea is probably the best note taker I've ever seen. <laughs> You're not allowed to go anywhere. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So if you're curious about the next agenda that we have for the next TOC meeting, take a look at it and show up. Welcome. Come on in. We got a big tent. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything you need to share with regard to elections that are upcoming? I think I've seen election announcements. What was that floating around? So there is a, um, a TOC group, uh, Google group email list, and also there's just the, the CDF uh, group email list as part of that. Um, we have the Slack channels that are out there um, for, the, for the TOC, for the CDF. Um, so all those can be found off of the CDF website. Um, but which elections are going on now? I can't well, remember. We, yeah. So we just completed the end user uh, representative right. election. So we have two new representatives, Neil from Fidelity and Adizio from Apple that joined us. And we have now the yeah, project representative elections coming now, I think, nomination. And the CPF general and end user member representative because somebody dropped out because they switched companies. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we have the, the extra one, yeah. The Slack channel, y'all, is like your best bet for kind of all the information. I know it's like not another Slack workspace, yep. but... It failed in my microphone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. So the Slack workspace i know it's you're like just another slack workspace but it's the best place to just get like the concise information with the links to everything so the cdf toc project reps election process started uh may 4th and now we also have the general and end user member um nomination period that starts and then the election nominations end may 16th and voting starts on the 17th so there are plenty of opportunities for you to get involved in a level where you have a seat at the table in addition to just you know joining the meetings and, and raising your hand and, and ha having a voice. So you can take your level of volunteerism wherever you'd like to go. Um, and there are guidelines and it tells you like what you're eligible for and what you're not eligible for based on if your um, company is a member or a company is an end user member or if you're just a member of the community. I know that's like a lot of uses of the word member, but that's why I'm saying just like click a link and it'll tell you all the good stuff. You have to register to vote too. Um, so the way the voting works is that it, they're gonna, it's gonna look at your um, LFX tools, is gonna look to see that for each project that is voting for their member rep, you have to have at least 10 commits over the course of a year. And if you don't, if you're doing something else that you're being involved with that doesn't require it, there, there's going to be a form. And I thought the form was supposed to go out by the 15th. I know it's not live. Uh, it wasn't live last week. So I thought the form went out on the 15th. So we probably should check and make sure. Because the form says, I, do, I, I want to be able to vote, even though I don't have 10 commits. So, so we that, should check that, on that. That comes into play. Like we have uh, folks that do blogs, podcasts, those type of things that you don't, obviously don't have a commit for um, a podcast. Um, so we want to make sure those people are um, able to participate. And that's where that uh, form that Tracy was talking about is out there. Yeah. And on the CD.Foundation website, uh, yeah, you can find in the top corner all the links to the Slack and all the communication channel. So. Anything else? I think we've got to wrap up here pretty close. Yep. Yeah, we're about the time. Thanks, y'all. Well, thanks, everyone. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, everybody.